Hello everybody and welcome back to Robert's Reviews. Today we have another Leonardo DiCaprio review for you. Today we're skipping two years of inactivity by Leonardo and we are going to be reviewing The Beach. The Beach was released in the year 2000, which for those of you who don't know, um, he did a lot of movies in like 1998 and then just like stopped doing things for two years. Um, I don't know why, I'm curious, um, but uh, he didn't really do anything for like two years uh, and then just suddenly did The Beach. He did a short cameo in the movie Celebrity. Uh, I was going to review it on the channel, however, I could not find it anywhere. Um, on any streaming platforms or even to rent off of YouTube. So, I made the executive decision to, decision to skip that one because it is just a 10 minute cameo. So I moved on to the beach. Pardon any loud noises from my family. I did say that I was filming. They don't care. This movie was written by John Hodge and directed by Danny Boyle. And for those of you who don't know or are unfamiliar with the beach, um, I'm going to go through a pretty detailed explanation of the plot, because I think it's kind of important for this one. It's a movie that I think most of you probably have not seen, um, so here it goes. Essentially, um, there's a kid named Richard, that is Leonardo DiCaprio's character, and he decides he wants to go off on an adventure and like learn something new and like do something new. It looks like he's fresh out of high school, and he probably like left his parents and... Um, just went to, I think it was uh, Bangkok. He went to Bangkok. Just because he was curious um, to see the world and something different. He is American. So I mean, he went from America all the way there. And then he's in this crappy hotel when he meets this guy named Daffy in his hotel room. And Daffy is a crazy person. And he goes off and he tells him, he's like, listen, man, there's a beach out there. And then he gives him a map to this beach, which he says is the most perfect beach in the entire world. The water's crystal clear, the sand is pearly white, and it's just the best beach in the world. And so, DiCaprio's like, you know what? We're going to do a little adventure. So he's like, I'm going to go out, I'm going to find this beach, I'm going to see if it really is truly as beautiful as Daffy says, uh, because Daffy ends up killing himself shortly thereafter. Um, we don't really know why, but we can assume it's because he wasn't really supposed to tell any secrets about the beach um, and then he probably felt guilty after telling him and then killed himself. So he goes off, but on the way he stops by uh, this this person that lives down the hall from him in the hotel room. He's like, listen, I'm going off to uh, this beach and I want to know if you want to come with me. So she and her boyfriend come with him. So it's the three people. And they stop outside of the area that they're going to. And uh, for some reason, uh, Richard gets stuck out of his house. He's like locked out. So he meets these other, like, three or four people, and they're having beers and whatever, and smoking weed. Um, I should mention this is rated R for a lot of swearing and a lot of, um, uh, uh marijuana, I guess. Um, I probably would have rated it PG-13, um, uh, except for the swearing. There's a lot of swearing in it. Um, but again, they could have just cut that out, but they didn't. They decided to keep it in and make it rated R, which is fine, um, but it is rated R. <clears throat> so... He, the people bring up the urgent, the urban legend of the beach, and he, they, you know, of course, Rich is like getting all nervous. He's like, I know about the beach, and like, so what he does is he leaves them a map without telling them that he left them a map. He like left it there in the morning on the on the on the table out front, and then proceeded to swim the two miles all the way to the beach. Um, when they get there, the first thing they see is just like acres of weed farm and you know of course they're celebrating like yeah so much weed we're gonna smoke every all the time and then these people come out with like um like you know ar-47s like yeah um but they don't shoot because they don't see them so like they're trying to sneak around this pot field and they eventually do get out once you get out of the pot field there's a cliff and you jump off the cliff into the the water but they were scared to do it but the girl did it so they're like why not so they did that, and that's like the first like initiation of getting to the beach. Um, and what they didn't know was that there's a whole civilization there, 
and they're growing and they're they're trying to keep it secret. They don't want anyone else to know because it's a perfect society. There's no like laws and like everyone has their own job that they do and it just kind of works. Um, and so they they run into like all these different people and like of course Richard's like this is the greatest place on the planet. And eventually he gets um, Francoise, which is the girl that comes with him. He eventually gets him to go out with him instead of the boyfriend he, that she came with. Um, which is a, a side plot, but it's an interesting side plot. I'm okay with it. Normally I wouldn't approve of such of a side plot, but I really did enjoy the side plot in this one. Um, I feel like without the side plot, the movie wouldn't have had a lot of beef. It would have kind of fell flat, but it had a nice little side plot there that I really enjoyed. They're living there for no one knows how long. Uh, they don't really tell us. But they're there for a while. And all of a sudden, this shark comes out. And while Richard is out catching fish. And Richard's able to kill the shark. And they're, they're like, yay, we get to eat shark. And then there's this one guy who's like, now the mother is going to come and find out who killed the baby. So a couple days later, all three fishermen are out fishing. Beside for Richard, Richard's not out. And the shark attacks and kills one of the people and bites the leg of one of the other ones. And I want to give a quick shout out to whoever did the special effects for this. It was fantastic. I'm pretty sure it was all practical. I mean, by pra I don't mean there was a shark attack, but I do think, I do 100% believe that all the blood and stuff there was like, like actually there, not actual blood, but it wasn't like CGI blood. I think that they actually used like really good fake blood for that. And I think the makeup artists in particular were fantastic in this movie, so shout out to them. Um, so they get nervous and all that, so they figure out how to fix all that, and then one of the guys, the guys that get, the guy that got bit in the leg, has to go live in the forest, because he keeps screaming, and it's annoying the other people. Um, so that's when, you know, Richard's trying to realize the, the, uh, the colony is not such a great place to live. It's not very good. It, you know, if they're willing to hide someone, because he's being loud and obnoxious, but he's dying, and they won't let him see a doctor, because they don't want the doctor to know that they're there. Um... It's concerning, and you can see in his face, in Richard's face, that he's concerned. But then um, Sal, who is a female and is the leader of the clan, goes up to Richard and is like, "Hey, I heard you got here by a map. Was there another map?" And he says, "No," even though he definitely did draw a map for the other people. And shortly thereafter, they see the people out there, and they see her holding a map. And Sal gets pissed, and so he she brings Richard to the edge of the forest by himself. Like, it's like a mile away from civilization. And says so, that so he has to stay there until they get to the island. Then they have to get the, the map back from the island and then tell them to go away. Therefore, no one else comes to the, the colony and the civilization. Of course, Richard's pissed and confused. And um, then, you know, Francois finds out that Richard had slept with Sal, which is another side plot that I also genuinely enjoyed. Um, and so, so so Richard's by himself, and he starts to go really, like, actually crazy. They're like, he envisions himself in a video game, which really distracted me, kind of. It really did distract me quite a lot in that part of the film. Um, but he, he they did that, and, like, he starts, like, imagining killing people and all that stuff. And then eventually they make it over to the, this other beach, the, uh, the people that were, he drew the map for. They show up on the side of the beach, and um, the farmers see them, and they shoot them all. They kill all four of the people, and of course, Richard thinks it's on him, and then they have this huge, like, war kind of thing that takes place in, like, three minutes, and that's just kind of the end of the movie. They they say that, you know, they all leave the civilization and go back to regular life, and it just felt kind of like a not a very good ending, but it was fine, I guess. I'm going to talk about the acting first, I'm going to talk about what I didn't like about the film, and then I'll give it a rating. Leonardo DiCaprio as Richard. I think it was, I think he was fine. I think it was one of his better recent performances. I think he was great in Titanic, but after seeing him in The Man in the Mask, in The Iron Mask, it just wasn't very good, and this is a good step up from that. Um, I really, really liked it, and I really enjoyed watching him in this performance. I think it was... It, I think you can really tell he's trying to get older in this one. You're like, oh, soon he's going to start portraying adult roles. Um, I think we still have a couple movies where he portrays, like you know, teenagers, but I think after that, shortly thereafter that, he's going to be portraying some of the more adult roles that he's more familiar about, like, like, um, like The Revenant and stuff, but The Revenant's, you know, 16 years away. We are in the 2000s, though, so that's a good promise. Uh, Virginie, um, Ledogin, Ledogin, it's, it, these are all French, so it's hard to pronounce, um, plays Francoise, who is the girl that's kind of a hoe, um, 
I enjoyed her performance a lot because she has, like, the ability to show that she cares about both of the people that she's sleeping with while also showing that, you know, she doesn't care and she's really just in it for whoever's going to treat her better. Um, I really did enjoy her performance in this film. I think that she could have done a little bit more to show who she cared about more because it was hard to tell where she was swinging, which way, and, like, all that kind of stuff. It was really kind of distracting sometimes trying to f figure out where she was in which relationship. But overall, not bad. Uh, Julian uh, Canet, I think it's pronounced, um, as Atine, I think it's pronounced. Um, again, French. Uh, and he plays French Wallace's original boyfriend. And I did not like his performance almost at all. It just felt kind of lazy. I think that the quote-unquote bad guys of films need to be more careful with how they're playing them. Because he just felt like lazy. I needed to believe that he was a good guy in order for me to see that he was not a good guy, right? Obviously, we're going to loot for Leonardo DiCaprio because he is the lead. But we also have to have a smart part of us that is also going to be rooting for him to get the girl. And so it's complicated. And I honestly just didn't think he did a good enough job. I think he was kind of lazy and I didn't like him. So it was easy for me to like um, Francois and Richard. So uh, I think a little bit more work on, on the aspect of like, you need to like him as well. And, and I think it would have been a better performance. Robert Carlyle as Daffy. And I think that... He had a difficult role because he's very front-loaded. He's in the first, like, 20 minutes of film and that's it. Um, but I think he did fantastic. Being in that part of the movie is really hard because you are responsible for drawing you in. And he played Daffy. He's just so crazy. It was really, really respected. I really enjoyed watching him. Great job for you. Tilda Swinton. Uh, you'll know Tilda Swinton as Sal. She's the leader of the clan. Um, honestly, I was really surprised to see her in this movie. Um... This is, like, kind of sort of before her, like, big years. Um, but overall, generally a good performance. Um, I think her performance was up to par with DiCaprio's performance in general. So some things I didn't like about the film. I didn't like the pacing of the film. It felt very fast in the beginning, and then it got really slow. And I think the issue is that we didn't have timestamps in the end. Like... We didn't, I don't know how long they were on the beach. They could have been there for two days. They could have been there for a month or two. And then also at the end of the film where, you know, Richard starts to go crazy, there's a small part of the film that suggests that he imagines that he goes crazy. And I didn't bring it up in my recap because I didn't think it was important because I'm not sure if he actually did or not. And I guess that's kind of the point, but also it really just kind of left me confused more so than like, oh, how cool would it be if this is all in his head? Like, I just think that if they were really going to go that route, they should have really went that route, you know? And I don't think they did, I don't think they went that route deep enough, you know? It just felt like, they're like, oh, we have an idea. Okay, what's the idea? What's, what if he was all in his head? They're like, oh, just put something in there that kind of mentions it, and then maybe some audience members will think that. And I felt that was very lazy writing, and honestly, just not very good. Directing in general, not bad. It wasn't great. I enjoyed the overall process of getting to the beach. That was beautiful. And then while you're on the beach, I just thought the, that it, the whole story was kind of slow and sloppy and genuinely not good. I kind of was thinking this is an adventure film and it turned into like a drama survival film kind of thing. But the beginning part where it was just an adventure film was really solid. Um, I really enjoyed that part of the film. Acting, overall, generally pretty good. Special effects, there weren't a lot of um, VFX, I think. Uh, although I did hear that they digitally recreated a mountain for the film, so good for you, I didn't even notice that. Um, normally I pick up on those things, I didn't pick that up. So the VFX artists and the, um, the makeup team, top tier, super good. Um, but overall, in terms of just the movie as a whole, I'm going to have to give this movie a B-. minus. That's going to do it for today. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed the review. Tomorrow we are going to be reviewing Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. Season 4. So that's another good one. I know a lot of you guys like those videos that I do with Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. So that's good. Um, I always enjoy watching them. So I hope you guys enjoyed that video tomorrow. Coming up this week we have The Way Way Back. Which is another Steve Carell film. As well as Steven Universe the movie. Which is a request. So and that will wrap up the week. Just a reminder that on the 15th uh, WandaVision does come out. I don't know if all episodes are coming out on the same day or if they're coming out weekly. I'm hoping they come out weekly now. I originally was hoping they call it all at once, but I really don't want to have to binge watch it. So I'm hoping they come out weekly, but we will see. Um, regardless, I will release a video on that as soon as I watch the entirety of it. But uh, that's all that's really coming up in the next 
um, next couple of of, uh, of days here, and then looking forward to next week. We've got some good stuff there. But uh, that's going to do it for me today. Um, as always, keep watching movies and television, stay educated, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Thank you.